out here in May 2012 um, because of Goer Hip Hop. Mm -hmm. And then also just to visit two of my friends that had moved out here. Yeah. And I was doing an interview at Interscope for Kenny Smith's daughter, Kayla oh. Brianna. And when I was sitting there, um, her manager was like, oh, what do you want to do? And I said, I want to have my own show. And he goes, why are you in Chicago? I didn't know how to answer that. I just said, I don't know, I'm from there. Like, right. no, usually when you tell people you want your own show, they're like, oh, what do you want it to be about? Or, but he was just like, why are you in Chicago? Like, but, oh, sorry. But I was like, okay, well, I don't know. So then I got on the train um, and then I started praying about it and was like, am I supposed to move to LA where I know nobody? Right. Or mm. do I stay in Chicago where my family is and where I've already built my brand? For sure. Um, and I, I was like, God, please give me a sign. And then I swear when I got off the train, I started walking and there was this homeless lady like yelling and throwing shit at people. And I was like, don't look, don't look. And then I tried to go back to get on the other side. And then, you know, when you tell people like, oh, don't look now and you yes. a thousand percent look. So I made eye contact with her and she said, follow your passion. And like mm. this gremlin voice. And I'm like, oh shit, I think I need to go. So I called my parents when I got back to the hotel and said, I'm gonna move to LA um, around Labor Day when Chris, that's my brother, goes back to school, so I'm just gonna enjoy summer, try to find a job, never found a job, nobody called me back. Um, and then Hot New Hip Hop reached out and said they were looking for a correspondent in Chicago. So I didn't know who they were. And then when I did it, um, I was like, can I get a job in LA? And they're like, we're not based in LA, we're in Canada. And I'm like, okay, well, I'm gonna still go anyway. So I just packed my car and then I drove out here. So there was like no job, nothing um, in line. And then the first weekend I got here, I wanted to um, go to the mall and try to get a job at Aldo Shoes. Yeah, I used to be a manager Aldo. there. Right. <laughs> so I went to the Burbank Mall. Sorry, I'm rambling, but it's like a long no, no, story. Tell us. And then um, I asked the lady, I'm like, are you guys hiring managers? Because I just moved here like two days ago and I need a job like so I can survive. And they were looking for a manager and she said, come back Thursday so we can do your paperwork. Mm. Um, here comes Thursday and I'm about to walk out of my apartment and this weird number calls me. Um, and it was it was Canada, but I thought it was the people from Hot New Hip Hop. So I pick up. I'm like, hey, Jason, like, how are you? Mm -hmm. He's like, this isn't Jason. This is Sorrow. I'm like, who the hell is Sorrow? Like, I've never talked to a Sorrow. And he's like, I'm the owner of Hot New Hip Hop. And he's wow. like, are you busy? I was a thousand percent busy, but I wasn't going to tell him that. So I went right. back in the apartment and long story short, he goes, um, out of all the correspondents we hired in all the big markets, you were the only one who booked your own interviews and you booked more than we did as a company. So I was hoping you were looking for a full-time job. So then I ended Very up cool. getting the full-time job that is so cool. once I actually drove over here. Yeah, that's awesome. That is so then that's so how it started. My, my story started pretty fast. So I went to this special music school called Music and Production in Sweden. Mm. We had to do like auditions, like Berkeley auditions right. when I was 15, which was super dope because everybody in the school were very talented and I do that's a that's a great thing as like a young kid because you trigger each other right that's right yeah, yeah. so after school I got out and uh, I moved down to Copenhagen mm -hmm. and I was like okay I got I, I worked construction because my dad owns a construction or his boss at a construction company and I did that for two months almost died <laughs> yeah, that's not like that's not my life I know what I'm yeah. like I, I, I will last two more weeks here <laughs> I'm too fragile for this <laughs> So um, I just searched for every possible gig that I could find. And I got a booker and he booked me for like a gig in Vietnam. Wow. Yeah. And then the contract was one year. So I just went, didn't know anyone. Mm. Like my mom was crying at the airport. She's like, I'm never going to see him again. <laughs> I'm like, bye. That's awesome. <laughs> like, I'll be fine. See so you. then uh, we had a band that they picked together, kind of like a circuit band. Um, drummer, gospel drummer from the US, bassist from Canada singer from Canada, another singer from New Zealand, very like picked together. Interesting. And we played two years in Asia. So I did Vietnam, Thailand, China, back to Vietnam, then Oman in the Middle East. Oh, that's awesome. So I was gone for two years. Yeah. Wow. I think there's a nugget in this that I want to point out. And that is, you know, a lot of times artists or anyone who's getting into a career field that they're passionate about, they, they think it's going to happen in a certain way. You know, I'm going to go here and I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that. I think the nugget in this is that when you leave yourself open, because that's what it sounds like you did, you were open to what came. You know, you wanted the success, you want success and you want opportunity, but you were open to how it came. So to go from where you were in Copenhagen and 
to go to another country and to set up there and become that's just to have that you know jump your career is something that I wanted to point out because mm -hmm. sometimes people get stuck in the I want it to happen this way and it doesn't always happen that way definitely I mean, I had no plans to start a skincare line. I was a film major. I wanted to be a music video director. Okay. Um, that's why I originally moved out to LA. But I was hit with um, adult onset acne when I was 27 years old. Oh wow! I tell people all the time that I was like a proactive commercial. Um, it wow. happened out of nowhere. I was living in DC. Obviously there was a ton of humidity. I went to school in the Midwest, a lot of humidity. And then I moved to LA when I was 23. And after about like three years here, my skin freaked out. Um, I, in working in music videos, I was shadowing makeup artists. So I had a lot of access to the beauty industry right. and a lot of people. Um, when the music video industry kind of bottomed out and copyright infringement and that whole world happened in 07, 08, oh, yeah. um, Longcomb headhunted me to be a makeup artist for them. And uh, that's really when it started, like most of the acne started. And uh, with friends in the industry, everybody from Clarins and Clinique and you know NARS, all these people were like, try this, try this, this will work on your acne. Nothing did. I spent a shit ton of money on product. I went to countless dermatologists and nothing worked. And um, I decided to take matters into my own hands. And I went back to school. UCLA had a cosmetic chemistry program. I went through the program three times, wow. learned everything there was to learn about what works on the skin versus what is marketed to us right. as working. And those are two very totally different, different things. things yeah. um, and uh, like, you know, I guess the old story goes, I started making product in my kitchen and made a product that got rid of my own acne in 32 days. When I was in college at Miami University in Oxford, Ohio, I was actually conducting undergraduate research on the political participation of the millennial generation. Right. I did research on all sorts of different things. The politics of disability, the politics of ageism through the mm. Scripps Gerontology Center. Mm -hmm. So for me, it was just a very natural segue. Right. 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 So then now being a political science major, what made you decide to switch over to fashion? How'd that happen? So, so it's an interesting story. So while I was conducting research with the Scripps Gerontology Center, mm. I was basically testing the effectiveness of art on people who have dementia and Alzheimer's. Nice. Okay. And we were able to conclude that art is so transformational. It's so powerful and hmm. profound on these people's lives, even at such a late stage in their lives. Wow. So I thought to myself, you know what? This is something I need to do for the rest of my life. What is a type of art that exists in everyone's life on a daily basis? Mm. Passion. Passion. Yeah. Yes. And so I quickly packed a suitcase and a backpack, flew out to Los Angeles on my own and started my new career. So I moved to LA originally in 2006 from Western Maryland. Okay, so you're East Coast girl. More, East, Coast yeah, girl. East Coast girl, yes. Coast yeah, this we is like the know. East Coast table. Like, <laughs> right. Where it's at. And um, I was 19 years old and I moved out here for an acting modeling contract. So I was in the entertainment world for a while, but it was, you know, I found out it wasn't really my passion. Okay. I wasn't passionate enough to withstand like the rejection and the BS that comes with that industry. Oh yeah. And I'm very much a control freak, intellectualize everything. I needed something that was a little more innovative. So I pivoted to writing that made its way for um, social media marketing, which then opened up the door to the um, organizing situation. And then of course the new agency and other things. But with Honeysuckle Magazine, um, I actually met Ronit, who is the founder of Honeysuckle, thanks to another connection that reached out to me on Instagram, oh, which nice. just goes to show the power of social media. Right yes. there, I have that met, part. Yes, I've met so many people from either Facebook or Instagram, especially Instagram though, and it's just like one connection leads to another and another and another. I really like to say that when you're growing your following, what you really are doing is building relationships at scale as yes. opposed to just like, I want followers, I want followers, which I hear that all the time, but it's more like you need relationships.